Hey everybody, this is Abby from Realistic Kitchen and Gardens. Today is September 5th, Thursday, uh, Ohio Zone 6A Garden. Um, expecting our frost probably the second full week of October. I think first date is the 15th, so we'll see. Um, but I haven't updated you lately on this herb garden, which is in probably at least 60% shade and it's doing much better. Um, our mold tower is basil, looking really good. I do like this variety. Um, they don't have the huge, huge Genovese style leaves, but they have a really good flavor. Um, and the upright behavior is very nice. Uh, Thalia, Thalia dill, still hanging on in flower or in seed rather um i should really harvest these if i want them or they're gonna sprout babies in the spring which i wouldn't be opposed to free dill <clears throat> i believe this is lemon basil mrs burns lemon basil this is a much better example of what the plant actually does um it's a very large bushy basil this this is all one plant um it's actually leaning on the stairs here but I really liked this plant. I'm definitely going to do this as a companion. It is very lemony. It's not very basil. It's very lemon, which is nice. Um, and then underneath it here is <laughs> the parsley. Uh, long standing, long standing, long standing parsley uh, that I seeded back in February. It's doing great under there. Uh, I guess it keeps it from getting too hot. Cinnamon basil, haven't really used this. Um, I mean, it's it reminds me very much of Thai basil, both the leaves, the coloration, um, the flavor is a little licorice-y too, or it's just because I had the lemon in my nose, so it kind of smells like a combo. I think cinnamon basil is probably the same as lemon basil, or uh, sorry, Thai basil, so not going to bother growing that again. Didn't use it. It's pretty enough, but whatever. And then this is lime basil, which was also a new one for me this year. And it is so limey. Limey. I love it. I used this in, um, I think I used it in some kind of Mexican thing recently, and I loved it. Um, this is, if you've never seen it, this is what lettuce seed looks like they're kind of like dandelions honestly um they have little fluffies to help it float and find a spot to seed out um but this is buckley red oak leaf lettuce there's two of them one two they took a long time to bolt um oak leaf has those long skinny leaves they're not like a big beautiful cupped butter head type so teach their own um, we liked it for sandwiches. And then this is Golden Jubilee Anise Hyssop. The bees have been loving this. I always catch a bee on it, except this morning, of course. Um, it's supposedly a tea herb, and I don't know. I just smell lemon and lime, but I've been handling lemon and lime. I haven't used it for tea. It's a nice plant. I like how the bees like it. Um, I could potentially put it as a companion for... Um, like tomatoes and things if I really wanted. Um, I, I don't know what family it's in. It might very well be in the mint family, which is always a slippery slope to go down. <clears throat> and then the pottage garden, garden of pots, because I haven't put these in the ground yet. Um, a lot of these have not been able to be soaked through really well because we've been so low on rain. Um, so a lot of these are gonna look really scraggly. If not, they're dead. Um, ginger basil, basil, ginger mint. Um, it's okay. I don't really use it. It doesn't really have a true gingery flavor. Uh, although that looks like a pot of grass, it's actually the peppermint, the fuzzy peppermint, and that's how dry it's been. I mean, even my mint is withering. How do you manage to wither mint? Um, Arp rosemary, loving life, not caring. 
I should really prune this back and put it in a bigger pot to see if I can have it survive this winter. Good King Henry, I'm very angry about the small pot. I may let it go, I've never used it. Um, it's like a spinach alternative and it's one of the first things to come up in the spring. Native variety of honeysuckle. Variety is called Major Wheeler from Gurneys. Also suffering severely from the drought. Um, I'm pretty sure I've nearly killed all my thyme. I think this one is the only one that, this is like a Wedgwood. The variety is called Wedgwood. I actually had a Wedgwood thyme. Um, most of this stuff is dead though. I It just got so dry and I couldn't keep it watered. So um, may have to start again with a classic time next year, which I can't grow it from seed. I just don't know what to do with it after that, apparently. Spearmint, I pruned this really hard to harvest from it because mint goes crazy and you can't kill mint, um, usually. So that's bedraggled. And then chocolate mint, haven't really used this either. I wouldn't be mad if this died off. This came back in this pot. All of these mints came back in these pots by themselves. I did not plant any mint this year. Lemon balm. I had started this from seed last year, put it in the ground at the previous gar um, previous house and then moved it with us. So it's had a rough one. It's brought some friends from the last house, whatever this is. Um, and this is dead foliage from the original, but it does have some new sprouts. Orange yellow thyme, completely dead. Started from seed this year in March. Was doing pretty good. And then it got in this pot and was very unhappy. So I don't know if it was me, the dirt, the stars not aligned, who knows. Meanwhile, lemon thyme, cross your fingers, is still doing well. Um, that's from Bonnie's seed, uh, Bonnie's plants. I finally found it. I've been looking for a true lemon thyme for at least a year. And then oregano, I finally got a bottom thing or a tray thing to be able to, uh, to let it soak in water. And it's coming back better because it was just about damn near dead. So I'm glad it's come back. Oregano is a staple, but I'm not gonna harvest from it this year. Um, these are all seed heads, I'm trying not to grab a spider. These are all seed heads. Um, white sage, allegedly that I started from seed this year. Very ugly plant. I'm really not a sage person to begin with. Oh, high spider web thing. Um, so I may let this go. It's sage, but it's not very pretty. Um, and then all but one of the six lavender I started from seed this year has died. Um, this is finished flowering. Just about there's a little color left in them they were very fragrant i'll definitely start a bunch more seeds for it next year and hopefully actually get it in the ground <coughs> excuse me what a thought putting plants in the ground anyway i'm gonna grab this cart with me as we go down because i need to bring some tools in the garden is starting to be put to bed Mostly because the closer we get to December, the less mobile I am. If you're new here, I am just shy of seven months pregnant. So uh, mobility is getting lower and lower, as is stamina for that matter. But I've done pretty well this year. I've taken it easy. I'm still pretty happy with what I've gotten done, even with the slight limitations I've had so far. Um, one other new thing that I don't think I've talked about is next to this yellow bucket to the right. Sorry about the jostling. Um, I have started a compost pile in the wake of my chickens being gone. Again, if you're new here, I had chickens that free ranged and they got eaten by something about a week ago. So now I have a compost pile and we'll see how it does. There's the coop down yonder, all closed up and put to bed for when we have chickens again, ready to go basically in the 
We're going to be getting chicks in like January, February, March. So, the silhouette has changed and it will change again. But I'll address it as we get there. <coughs> Row A. Peas. We're in such a bad drought. We allegedly got a third of an inch, a uh, third, like an eighth of an inch of rain, but a lot of these row covers prevented the brassicas from getting watered out. So I had to manually water them, but I haven't really watered anything else. Um, Lincoln shelling pea, looking pretty good. With the drought, they could be bitter. I just haven't gotten down here. We've been busy. I should have come down and uncovered these. I didn't remember to do that. Let me go around the other side. Um, so in A, we have... Brussels sprouts. This is jade. We've lost three of them. There were seven. Now there's only four or so. I can see them through the cover. I know you can't. Um, then here's some cabbages. I've planted three pixie baby, three Faroa. Both are repeats from the spring. And then I'm also doing six tiara, which I grew at the previous property and I know they do well. And then on this far end is jade Brussels sprouts, which I think are doing a little bit better. I should water again, it's hot under here. Um, I really can probably take the shade cloth in a bit, off in a bit, um, but they're the only thing keeping um, cabbage loopers and things from being on them because I don't have that many um, devices to shade them with. This white fabric here is um, frost fleece. It's not as permeable and it's not actually made for temperature control per se. It's to keep the frost from getting through and biting the tips of the plants. Um, so not the original use. <coughs> Surge shelling pea. These are a lovely variety. These are new to me from um, Holmes Seeds. They've been doing well. I, Well, they're obviously going downhill now. Um, but they're a decent shelling pea. I'm tempted to see how they do with just going to dry. Mostly because I can't be bothered. Um, coming out here to pick and shell like a handful at a time. Hmm. Yeah, a little... A little bit better. And then row B is, um, 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 what's down here? This is blue ribbon broccoli. This is a large variety, large heading variety of broccoli that is from Gurney's. It's a hybrid <clears throat> that is supposed to get absolutely gigantic heads on it. I tried to grow it this spring and Right before it was ready, we got into the 90s, so I didn't hope for it. And then, let's see. Then I have Bravado broccoli, which is, I have three plants of that. It's also a heading broccoli, but more of like an heirloom style. Um, and then I have Burgundy sprouting broccoli, which I believe I've lost at least one of. Nope, that's kale. I forgot I did kale. That's a uh, winter Lansy kale. It's very similar to that purple variety over there, but it's green. That's the one dead one, of course. There's one. There's your uh, purple sprouting broccoli. Very, very cold hardy variety of broccoli that produces small florets instead of large heads. It did very well last year, except the deer were starting to nibble on it. 
And then I have a number of cabbages. Um, I don't know what this one's doing. I don't know if that's sunburn or fungi or what. Um, but I have Denali, which is a white variety. Vite Verde, which is green. Not as geometric as Romanesco. Um, and Clementine again, which is orange. We really liked roasted cauliflower last year. So if these work, that'll be great. If not, bummer, but you know. Um, the bean row, I finally put the carrot boards down to start smothering things. Um, I do need to cardboard. I'm debating doing a large scale amount of um, solarization plastic. I really need to collect beans too, but it's been so dry. I figured there really isn't any. Um, Veller bush bean first crop did great. That was plant that was seeded mid June, and then this smaller row in the back was seeded in I think mid July, and they're struggling again because of the drought. Because um, I just haven't watered them. I mean, it's such a big row, and the beans aren't that critical to me. Arguably, the cauliflower isn't that bad either, but I mean, most things are available nearby. It's really not that critical per se. Um, this was where my spring brassicas were, row D. Um, and I left this kale out. More so I could just let it do its thing and see what happened. And if you ever wonder why I cover my brassicas with all these stupid rows and things is because uh, this is the work of cabbage loopers and I don't even know what else. I mean, there's egg sacs. There's an army worm, a small army worm right there, dead center on that leaf. So, you know. Um, and then I pulled all the tomatoes and peppers out last sometime last week, whenever I posted about harvesting. When I harvested all of them, I think the same day or following day, I pulled them all out. Um, so nothing's left in here. This trellis is going to be taken down and the T-post will be pulled out and held for resources to use next year. Um, I am definitely doing a squash arch again. I loved the squash arch. Um, the only tomato that's left that I left in is Bartelli cherry. My husband has loved this variety. We're gonna grow it again next year. Um, this year has been really odd because if you would ever focus, these squash bugs have been all over my tomatoes. And not to say I didn't think that was a thing, but uh, there's gourds here. I don't know why they're bothering the tomatoes. Only thing I can think of is they're thirsty and they're going for whatever fruit they can. Um, this is where the peppers had started. I've pulled all of them out. Um, these are all snapdragons of varying decisions. Um, seed heads for the snapdragons. This is one of the um, Finissimo Verde Apaya basil that's left. I'm gonna tear this out because I don't want it to reseed itself. I didn't like the variety, I'm not gonna bother. Um, one thing I'm definitely doing next year is going hardcore with the nasturtiums. Last year, the nasturtiums were too crazy and I think stunted my tomatoes. This year, um, I didn't have enough fragrant herbs around my tomatoes and they got eaten by um, tomato hornworms. To be fair, it was late in the season so I don't really care that much. Um, and then here is the other Emerald Towers basil. You can see how poorly this has done here. Um, I think basil does usually like a bit more shade. So there's that factor, but I think it's definitely this ground. I did not do a good enough job. Um, well, first of all, weeding, obviously. Um, but I definitely didn't do a good enough job tilling the ground originally. Here's a um, French marigold 
that I seeded from Saved Seeds. I love these little things. I don't know how useful they are because they're so small, but they're pretty and happy. There's another Famissimo Verde. I don't know if you could actually see that. Lemon basil and classic catnip. Potato row, garbage, failed, didn't work, but I have mulch that I can pull off to use for my um, <sighs> garlic. Sorry, morning is hard. Um, here is where the carrots were this spring. And here is the one and only shallot that I tried to transplant. It did bulb a little. I didn't really want to pull it out, but the greens are starting to die off, so I might as well. Ah, while I'm here, um, I believe this is row G. This, this patch, this empty patch is where my overwintering onions are going to go. Um, and then the spring onions will go on this side when I pull this stuff out. Utah tall celery, meh, not thrilled. Again, drought conditions screwed everything up. Um, we're not even going to talk about the attempt at celeriac. I can't even find them now anyway. They probably finally died. Tomatillos produced one crop. The two plants together produced one crop of two pounds. So very poor year. Soil, variety, drought, <laughs> doing great. Um, and then this was the cucumber row. You can see I've made progress on taking the trellis down. I moved one cattle panel, which is down on the other side of the fence, but I really can't move that myself safely. Um, this is row H. I finally labeled my rows so I know what row I'm at. This is going to be the row with the garlic, um, both hard neck and soft neck. It'll be three rows of, in this three, maybe four, we'll see, um, of both hard neck and soft neck. I talked about it recently. But um, this okra should really just come out. It's not doing anything. It's just ripening its seed pods. So there's one I'm saving for seed and the rest just kind of not got away from me per se. Well, they did, but I mean, there's not enough to bother saving pod wise. For seeds, yes, for eating, no. Um, Cause we usually eat them a quart at a time, quart. Um, so this is all cleared out. So let me come back to this edge to save myself a trip down there because it's starting to get hot. Um, this is climbing honey nut squash and you can see a lot of them are starting to ripen. They're a mini butternut variety. What is that? A grasshopper. Um, so they're ripening up and they will be, when used, they will be cut in half, roasted, and served with goat cheese. Those are so cute. They're so teeny. I don't think you guys can see them on camera. Maybe you can, but they're so little. They're probably only this big. I have some good sized ones. I'm pretty happy with this crop. I mean, this plant has been 100% careless. It's great. Also, look at this big boy spider. I really don't know if you can see him. But uh, there, there you go. You can see him on his web. I don't know what that is, but you keep eating yucky bugs. I love spiders. I don't like touching them, but I like them in my garden. And I'm okay with them in my bathroom, as long as they don't fall on me in the shower. I think there's three Lady Godivas left to ripen. This is one. This was covered in squash, blossom, uh, squash bugs yesterday. Um, so I threw a bunch of marigolds on it. I don't know if that'll do anything, but, and then there's one, where is it? I can't see it on the screen. Right past, there it is. Um, there's one night shift acorn squash there. Needs to ripen. There's another Lady Godiva, but I don't think that'll ripen. 
it just doesn't have enough resources in the plant. Um, and then there's two more down the end here by the watermelons. That one might be just about ready. That one's getting there. This one's still too green than orange. And then all the watermelons are basically done, these plants. I think when I harvested their fruit, they're just like, okay, thanks, bye. Um, but this one has a fruit, a baby fruit on it. And it looks like it's been fertilized. So I may purposely weed and water that to see how long that can go for. Because I love me some watermelon. Um, also tore out the spineless zucchini. They were getting powdery mildew and they weren't producing anymore. So I let them go. Um, fall crop that I'm most impressed with at the moment. Mostly because it's so showy. Um, and it might very well be the shortest variety, shortest day variety I'm growing for, for winter. Because brassicas are well over 100 days. Um, cabbages, cauliflower, all that jazz. Um, is the dragon bulb fennel. So this is used as a root vegetable, practically. You roast them, they're sweet, they're a little licorice-y. There's two spots where there's two right next to each other. These are about equal size. This has some significant difference. Maybe, maybe not. Changed its mind, I don't know. I've been watering these pretty religiously because I want these. <coughs> and then the carrots are getting big, or at least the foliage is. I really need to try to soak this down really, really well um, to try to soften up the soil for them so they can go down. This is Scarlet Nanty's carrots. There's four rows across. Um, trying to find a spot that has all four. So one, two, three, and four. So this is a 30 foot row. And if everything had germinated, I would have 350 carrots. It is quite obvious not everything germinated. So we're getting there. <clears throat> this is a 75 day variety. So I would have to do math. This side is drier than that. So I don't know if this is more compacted or what. Um, this is where the dill is the thalia dill. Not that I really need it now, but why the hell not? I should water it. Oh, that died. He got nibbled by something or just broke? Who knows? Anyway, um, and then this is going to be unfortunately fallow. I mean, I did want to do some um, <laughs> all the crickets jumping. I did want to do cover crops this year, but between the drought, the hard compact, or the hard soil, and my lack of excessive energy, I don't know if that'll happen. So, cross your fingers for rain. We're supposed to get some rain on Saturday. And uh, that's it. So if you like this kind of stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. <sighs> Excuse me. And follow along my Facebook page, Realistic Kitchen and Gardens for daily shenanigans that I managed to get myself into. Thanks. Bye.